Good evening. Well, well, I mean, that just sounds good to say that. It's evening here. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, good whatever you are having at present. Hope it's going swell. Um, hi. Uh, this is Harry Potter Abridged, still. I know you thought that when the streak was broken that all of a sudden the, the, the uploads would stop and it would just, the river would dry up and it would be, that would be that. But no, 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 no. I just had a, 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 a prior engagement and was not, uh, uh, was not, was not, did not have enough time. That's why I, I just wanted to be clever, and it didn't work. Oh, well. Right, so we are, if you're just joining us, um, we are in Harry Potter and the uh, Chamber of Secrets. And we are on chapter number 15, which is entitled Aragog. Um... And of course, <clears throat> one thing I will say about about uh, uh, most of the time, anyway, and I think I've said it before, uh, that when when uh, Rowling ch- titles her chapters, um, which she doesn't do in all of her books, but when she does with the Harry Potter series, the names often like it's like they give away something most of the time, not always. Um, but what you if you think about them from the standpoint of a first time reader most of the time they don't give away that much you know not not that's actually the important bits anyway um like a chapter like the forest again like you're like well okay so this hmm but also the previous chapter had ended with like Harry coming to a decision so it wasn't like there wasn't much to be spoiled other than the outcome which you know wasn't part of the title of the chapter anyway. It was just the setting. Anyway, so this this title, Aragog, um, is the first time you're reading it means essentially nothing because you haven't heard it the word yet. Um, so you don't know that it's a name or what that you know what it's a name of. Um, and if you're rereading, then it's like it 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 um well. Scenes may form in the mind as to uh, 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 what the, the the centerpiece of this chapter is. So, um, <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and say right now that this is the uh, this is the chapter where our our, our dear Ronald um, actually decides to face his worst fear. In like not even really realizing how that's going to actually play out, but 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 choosing it nonetheless, um, because of of you know a his his you know feeling horrible about what's happened at the school, especially now that Hermione's been petrified, but also um, because of you know Hagrid's in Azkaban, and it was like you know on his way out the door, he was like you know BTW uh, follow the spider jaw, and so. The creature that that Ron is the most afraid of, he now has to follow. Um, we'll get into all the details forthwith. Um, I don't even know if that was the proper use of that word. Anyway, uh, so so uh, the the seasons are changing. We're 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 creeping into official summer now, and so the 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 weather is sort of mocking them in a way because it's nice and warm and sunny outside, you know. But inside the castle, everything is still like messed up, you know, and also there's no Hagrid strolling around outside, you know, uh, to adorn the landscape with his, uh, presence, which is not insignificant, um, in many ways. So Harry and, 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 and company are not feeling so, uh, so hot. Um, of course, and Hermione's petrified, so that's, you know, the, the, the constant reminder that your best friend is missing because she's frozen in the hospital wing, not, not cheerful. So yeah, it's it it it's described that it's like the sun outside that warms the castle. Um, is like stopped right at the windows. You know, even though a little bit of light comes through, there's no everybody. Everything still feels cold. You know, metaphorically and maybe even to the point of magically, physically somehow. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up there. 
Um, so yeah, that Madame Pomfrey is not allowing them to uh, visit the hospital wing anymore, so they can't see Hermione, which of course, well, you know, until it really matters, visiting Hermione in the hospital wing when she's petrified is pretty pointless anyway, because it's not like you're visiting a uh, a, a patient who's like on the mend. They're just suspended, uh, uh, like 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 Captain America in the in the ice. Um. <laughs> And so, uh, boom, 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 boom. yeah, and so the, the 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 demeanor of the castle is described as everybody looking worried and tense, and laughter is is hollow and shrill and not very long lasting if you do hear it at all. Um, and Harry's like going over those last things that Dumbledore said before he uh, before he you know had to leave for a bit. Um, I mean, cause of course for a bit, um, uh, <laughs> it's only the second book. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, it's worth repeating just to, uh, uh, plant it in there, even though anybody who's read it a few times probably remembers it anyway, but he says, I will only truly have left the school when none here are loyal to me. And then the other thing he said was that help will always be given at Hogwarts to those who ask for it. And, you know, it's, um, it, it carry, it's a statement that carries, or it's two statements that carry beyond the ramifications of this specific book. Uh, uh, um, and it sort of also, like in a way, I didn't think about this until just now, but something else I was reading earlier was talking about how, um, something that happens later on in this chapter uh, sort of emphasizes how you your connections and your friends are a big part of, of, of surviving in the world um, because rarely does one person, like, pull off everything that needs to be done to, like, you know, solve a major problem or beat a big foe or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Uh... But anyway, at this point in time, Harry's like, who am I supposed to ask for help? And, you know, what does this really mean? But that's kind of a theme, too. Uh, Dumbledore is purposefully cryptic. It's like he has, like, a way of knowing how long it's going to take for people to figure things out, roughly, um, based on, like... I mean, it's like he can really... I mean, obviously, he's not. it's not perfect, um, and, and I think Rowling actually makes a point to like show that it's not perfect later on, but, but still he has a, uh, because he's so old and like, because he's so wise, like he was wise when he was young. And so age only like really, uh, uh, you know, seasoned his brilliance and wisdom, like to, to peak levels. Um, so anyway, uh, he has a way of, of, of sort of like knowing, like if I say something a certain way, It'll make just enough sense to keep them curious and not enough for them to solve it right away, and the intervening time will allow for X, Y, Z, whatever. Um, <laughs> which, I mean, there's like some, there, there's some like intuitional logic that can be applied in situations like that, but yeah, there's so many, there's so much random circumstance in, in the world too, so much just, you know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, so, so Harry's just left kind of puzzled on that. And, and yet, uh, he has something else to ponder, which is what Hagrid said. And of course, it's a lot easier to understand that follow the fucking spiders and nobody really wants to do that, but that's what he said. And, and they trust Hagrid to the extent that they can, even though they are acutely aware of like his, Fondness, yes, we'll say that for his fondness of um, larger than life type creatures and stuff, but but they they couldn't possibly predict. Yeah. Anyway, um, but but as it's noted, um, eventually the uh, spider evacuation of uh, of Hogwarts seems to be complete because. Granted, they're not allowed to uh, walk, roam the halls like they might have been before. They're always being herded between classes um, uh, as a group by teachers uh, after the new security measures. But 
nonetheless, uh, they're still on the lookout and they're not finding shit. So, as I said before, it's kind of curious that there would just be spiders and spiders and spiders. But it is a big ass castle, so fair enough. But now they're uh, they're not nowhere to be seen from what they're able to tell anyway. Um, so, bah, bah, bah. And, and you know, and it's said that most of the teach, I mean, most of the students, I mean, um, are like really cool with this arrangement because I mean, shit's just scary, you know, for the average person right now. So, you know, there is always strength in numbers, no matter what the situation is, um, or at least the overwhelming majority of the time, anyway. Uh, so yeah, but but of course it's. For Harry and Ron, and especially well, it says Harry specifically that it's 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 a bit irksome because you know they're, again they're the detectives, so they're wanting to like you know figure things out. Um, I mean, and you know I, I say that like pseudo mockingly, but I mean that you know the the theme is that they care about their friends and and about their fellow person in general. Um, so there there is uh there's there's definitely Gryffindorness, um, Gryffindority. <laughs> Gryffindorification in in the things that they're uh, uh, doing and wanting to do and their motivations in general. Um, but yeah, um, let's see. And so, of course, Malfoy is is strutting around like all happy, and then but Harry doesn't really realize why at first but then some for, for reasons I couldn't begin to understand he ends up sitting behind uh Malfoy and potions I always thought that they were like in opposite sides of like a semicircular classroom and like not anywhere near each other and like why on earth would you ever migrate into the area where the Slytherins are sitting if you're Harry Potter like that but maybe <laughs> Maybe there's something that I'm not thinking of there. Otherwise, it just seems like a sort of random plot coincidence. But whatever. Anyway, um, so then he hears, uh, overhears Malfoy gloating, um, basically that his, you know, the same thing he always says about Dumbledore, how father, uh, you know, thinks he's the worst thing that ever happened to the school and all of that and. I always thought father would be the one to get rid of Dumbledore. Oh. <laughs> uh, and so he's like, yeah, maybe we'll get a better headmaster now. McGonagall won't last long, blah, blah, blah. Snape comes by, um, doesn't say anything about Hermione not being there. Um, and then Malfoy's like just playing up to beat Peach teacher's pet with uh with a uh, fucking snape like you should apply i'm sure father would support you um all that kind of shit and uh snape smirks but then uh you know and i do wonder even though i'm kind of like team fuck snape even though like by the same token like the the princess tale is still heartbreaking to me every time but Still, you know, Snape is a bully, and and he's a grown man, and he shouldn't treat. He's just a bad teacher. I mean, it's he's brilliant, but he's not. That being brilliant doesn't make you a good teacher. Just like being a good player doesn't make you a good coach. Um, in a sport, um, it can, but it doesn't necessarily. So anyway, but 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 wait, what was my point just now? Oh, I I. <laughs> I wonder, because it says that Snape smirked as he swept off around the dungeon, but, you know, it makes you wonder, like, how do I say, um, like, does he like Malfoy at first, or does he actually think that he's kind of a, a, a bit of an idiot and just, uh, you know, plays along, just like he supposedly plays up his hate for Harry, but, I mean, let's face it, he clearly hates Harry. I mean, the way he can't control himself at the end of the next book um, is, is so... It's so obvious. I mean, and like I said, he might, you know, it, it, let's just say this. I feel like Snape's allegiance is still out of like convenience for his, his feelings from a long time ago. Um, if, if the person that he, he obsessively loved and couldn't seem to get over wasn't threatened, I don't think he changed his sides and we don't have this story, which is my, you know, 
a bit of, 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 you know, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's just how it seems to me. Like, I don't think he was just going to come to his senses and be like, oh, I should go spy for the other side. Um, I don't know. I'd love to hear what you guys think about that. But um, anyway, but I, yeah, I just wonder, like, because you see, like, tension between Malfoy and Snape later on in, like, book six. Um then it makes you wonder if it's just that the things have changed so much at that point that that's why they're, you know, like that. Or has there been like something simmering below the surface between, well, here it seems like Malfoy is legitimately like looks up to Snape. Um, and I'm sure that Malfoy is coming of age and just like his becoming more aware of the world around him as opposed to just his views from his father probably change uh, how he sees things. And that could include Snape. Um, he might even see that Snape is petty. Um, more so than he really, you know, I don't know. I, 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 all right, let's not go too far off on that. But I just, I just wonder sometimes because, you know, he just smirks here and like, and then, um, and there's Seamus Finnegan in the background, like pr pretending to throw up as Malfoy is like just laying it on heavy and thick for Snape. Um, and Malfoy continues to just spout off basically like his everything that he learned from his father. He's like, you know, I'm surprised all the mudbloods haven't packed and blah, blah, blah. I bet you five galleons another one's, the next one dies. And then he says, pity it wasn't Granger. Um, oh, but, but, but before, that's right. Snape didn't just smirk and walk off. I take that back. I just didn't, I thought I'd miss it. Well, I did miss it. Um, he basically, he actually corrects Malfoy and he's like, no, oh, no, Dumbledore's only been suspended. I expect he'll be back. And Malfoy's all like, yeah, whatever. Um, I'll tell dad you're the best teacher. Oh. <laughs> and that's when, uh, 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 Seamus does his, his, uh, miming of vomiting into his cauldron there. Um, I, I, I like how she does sort of Seamus is, He's in there more than you think he is. And I noticed that they actually, like, in the movies, they do a fair job of, like, working him into scenes. Granted, a lot of times it's just comic relief because he just, like, does silly shit and fucks up, like, hilariously. But it's kind of funny anyway. Whatever. I mean, you got to have some comic relief, and it can't all be Neville because, I mean, we have to be sympathetic to Neville, too, um, for various reasons. Um, anyway, uh, but it, so Malfoy says that shit about... Hermione, you know, obviously not keeping, obviously not keeping his voice down, so he knows Ron's going to hear him. But at that moment, of course, the bell rings, and so the 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 scramble for uh, getting everybody packed up and shit um, keeps Ron. For, well, that and Harry and Dean also hang on to Ron, but nobody notices that Ron was about to try and go for Malfoy barehanded. Um, he says that he's like, "I'll kill him with my bare hands." Ron's really. He's fed up with Malfoy. <laughs> um, okay, so that it's it's, it's good to, the tangents are are there today. Um, well, so I watched a video, and of course, oh man, I don't remember who it was now. It's not a channel that I normally watch. It's just something I saw on my homepage, but it was talking about what they did with Ron and Hermione in the movies versus how they are in the books. And ah, do I really want to break all this down? Well, I'll, I'll try to summarize. Um, basically, what the comparison for, for Hermione in the books versus Hermione in the movies was that in the books, she is still the smartest, but she's a flawed character. She, she's more human, and yet her friends... Uh, love and, and appreciate her for who she is all the way around. Um, whereas uh, movie Hermione is like impossible. Like like she she's like not not impossible. That's that 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 sounds demeaning. That's not the point. It's just that she's a little too perfect. Like like she's not uh, as uh, well. I mean, and J.K. Rowling said this too. She's like you, she was talking to Daniel Radcliffe in that that interview that I linked before and said that you guys are all like too attractive to be these characters. Like they're not, she said, they're kind of like three little ugly ducklings, you know, not ugly, ugly, but just more average looking, um, I guess. And so 
Anyway, um, but so her movie Hermione is 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 prettier. Her hair is only kind of made to be sort of bushy ish early on, um, you know, and then it's sort of like she just gets prettier as every movie goes on, basically. Um, and that's not, you know, it's like she only really shines in the books, um, at least you know on purpose, uh, uh, outside of just you know how Ron and, and probably Harry to a certain degree both perceive her. Um, is is at the uh, Yule Ball in uh, Goblet of Fire, where so anyway, but that way it wasn't the the looks thing wasn't even really like that wasn't played up that much in the videos. So don't let me overemphasize it. I'm just trying to make comparisons. But anyway, uh, and then of course the other thing is that like, I mean we can all say that Ron is clearly the least uh, of the three of them, the least, uh, I guess, useful, if you want to just be very blunt about it. You know, I mean, he, he's, he's, he, he, he provides a lot of help in a lot of different ways, but he's not, you know, he's not the one usually solving the major problem. Uh, but in the movies, they have taken even more from Ron. Like, like he, they gave all the times, They well, not all the times, obviously not all the times, but on several occasions throughout the movies, um, there have been times where he has said something that was like uh, showing off like sort of his, his wizarding knowledge from being the only one of the three of them that grew up in the wizarding world. Um, and then other like things too. I don't, I don't remember all the examples now, but they gave like most of these lines to Hermione in the movies. And so they made her like, like, damn near perfect, you know? And it's like, she's, she is like extremely brilliant in the books too. Um, like extremely, but she's still flawed. She still like forgets oh, the one, the, the, the one example was that in, uh, in, in Philosopher's Stone at the point where they first jump down from the trap door under Fluffy and they land in the devil's snare in the book. Uh, Ron's the one who's like, are you a witch or not? Like, like Hermione's like, oh, well, like, first of all, it takes her a while to remember what the deal is with Devil's Snare, which I mean, whatever, anybody would panic. It's, it's a fucking crisis. But, uh, and then when she does remember, she forgets like that she has the ability. She's like, actually like of the three of them, the only one who really can like just summon up flames whenever she wants to. Um, so it just shows, you know, like somebody who's not entirely perfect where, which I mean, again, she still saves the day. Right. And that's that's not a problem. It, it's just that that it's sh- they created like some flaw or they uh, that's not the movie. That's the book. She created some flaws in, in Hermione's character, um, whereas in the in the movie version of that exact same scene. Well, it's not exact. Um, uh, Ron doesn't say anything. It's uh, it's Hermione who like goes through all of it in her head and then solves it and then uses the fire. And, and, and only her only Ron is left uh, because they all they she's like just relax and they all relax and and Ron's the only one who can't relax so Hermione has to solve the problem and she solves it without any outside interference like she I mean I think she talks to Harry a little bit but mainly she's just talking it out in her you know out loud and then saves Ron and then Ron's just kind of left there to look like do 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 good job um and so like and there's like several more occasions where they do exactly the same thing where they give Hermione one of Ron's lines um, and then make Ron just sort of be comic relief for the scene. I hadn't really realized it because truth be told, I don't watch the movies a lot compared to like uh, my book consumption and reconsumption. Um, But anyway, that it it is kind of unfortunate um, that that they, because I mean, it's not like Hermione wasn't going to be a strong, important female character if she was written more like the books and the movies, you know, like, like that's the point. She is those things and yet still is a flawed person and her friends love her and she loves her friends and they're all loyal and dedicated and awesome and all that. Um, that's sort of what makes the, uh, the relationship in the books more like poignant and, and, and beautiful to me. Anyway, I told you we had tangents today. Um, Hydration. Very important. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
So anyway, uh, so they get, so Snape finally gets them off to the greenhouses, and they finally are able to let go of Ron. It's weird. He says he has to take them to Herbology, but obviously, um, the Slytherins don't take Herbology with the uh, with the Gryffindors. So I don't really know where the Slytherins just sort of slithered off to. Um, but whatever. That's really minor. Um, they might have got handed off into another group that was headed somewhere else or whatever when they got to the top of the uh, the, the passageway from up from the dungeons. Who knows? It's not important, right? It's not. Um, anyway, so they get to Herbology, and of course it's a, a very subdued atmosphere because um, now Justin and Hermione are, are missing from this class. And so one person from each house, obviously, and uh, that sets up the um the obvious reconciliation of Harry to uh Ernie McMillan, who comes up to him uh when they're doing what? Oh, getting Oh, they're recycling their stuff into the compost heap. That's what they're doing. Um their plant parts <laughs> stalks. And uh yeah, so Ernie's just like, Yeah, my bad. Um, obviously I know you wouldn't attack Hermione, so, yep, I was wrong, <laughs> sorry about that, shake, shake on it, okay, cool, we're good, great, um, Ron, however, is not as, uh, as quick to be cool about it, but, but whatever, I mean, you know, um, we're, we're following, it, first and foremost, we're following Harry's, uh, journey here, so obviously it's, even though it's not st overly stated, um, you can kind of get the sense that like that Harry at least feels nice to have somebody back off of the uh, accusation. And I mean, and really, ever since Hermione got attacked, you know, obviously a lot of people had to be like, "Well, obviously it's not Harry." I mean, it was kind of silly to think it was anyway, but you never know. I mean, well, no, it wasn't. Not 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 after the talking of the snake thing. That would start anybody thinking that potentially that didn't know him. Um. Anyway, but of course, uh, uh, Ernie. <laughs> now that he's not no longer accusing Harry, he doesn't seem to be okay with not being able to like come up with a culprit. So now he's ready to talk about Malfoy. Of course, Harry and Ron uh, uh, have already gone firsthand into the uh, common room of of the Slytherins and discovered that it's absolutely not Malfoy, and they're kind of just like. Ah, <sighs> boy, yeah. And Ron's all like, oh, very, very clever. That's, that's, uh, well done. Um, but then, yeah, or even Ernie asks Harry, and Harry's just like, nah. Nope. And they're, so the, the him and Hannah, Ernie and Hannah are both kind of like, uh, okay. Like, thought you and Malfoy didn't like each other. Like, why, how, why are you defending him? But of course, there, none of these things actually get said. Um, so, and then Harry, um, looking away or around or whatever, uh, happens to spot some spiders on the ground and points them out to Ron. And Ron's like, oh, that's, that's great. Good news. We found the spiders. Oh, oh and they're heading, they're heading towards the, the forest. Great news, everybody. Oh, that's really good. Oh. And so, yeah, and, and meanwhile, Ernie and Hannah are just like, what the fuck are they talking about? What are they looking at? Like, what on earth? So anyway, um, so they're like, huh, we'll have to deal with this. Uh, so they leave that class, and then they go off to Defense Against the Dark Arts, and... Harry's like, yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna have to get into the forest. We can take the invisibility cloak. We can take Fang. He's used to going into the forest. And Ron's like, oh, okay. What about? Aren't there? And I don't know why this is like the common. Maybe it's just because it's the kind of thing that kids will tell each other to scare to scare them. But like, they're like, aren't there supposed to be werewolves in the forest? And which we learn, of course, that that's not generally the case because first of all why werewolves they're like people um like 
most of the time, not wolves. So like, yeah, anyway, whatever. It's just, it, it's, it's one of those, like, it's like one of those things I think that people just say, um, and then like younger kids like latch on to it because that's what younger kids do until they start to learn a little bit more. Um, and Harry's like, yeah, but there's, there's, you know, there's also centaurs and unicorns and nice things too. Not just, you know, I'm not going to talk about that other thing you said. Um, ba, 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 ba. oh yeah. And so we, we get the, the mention that, you know, Ron's never actually been into the forest at this point, which is funny because like, uh, I think it's in the next book. I'm pretty sure it is actually like, we uh, Harry overhears uh, Mr. Weasley, or the, well, the, the Mr. and Mrs. Weasley talking, and one of them says something about how they've been in the forest twice now, which Harry will have been in the forest twice by then, but 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 not Ron. And actually, there's really no way that they should even know about this time that's coming up because they don't get found out about it. Um, sorry, spoiler alert, but. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. anyway, <laughs> and so, yeah, Lockhart comes into the classroom, and he's just all, like, buoyant and happy and bouncy, and everybody's like, what the fuck? Like, this dude is out of his goddamn mind. Um... <laughs> And he's like, oh, come now. Why are these long faces? Like, really, why are the long faces? That's what you're going to say. Um, <laughs> and he's like, don't you realize the culprit's been caught? Um, and he's all like, yeah, you know, they wouldn't have arrested him if they weren't 100% sure that he was guilty. <laughs> and Ron's like, yay, yeah, would... And because Ron's not thinking that he's not supposed to know that just now, he's getting a bit emotional. Um, and Lockhart's like, oh, I think I know a bit more about this than you. And Ron's like, no, you... Oh. And the oh is just because Harry stepped on his... F no, kicked him. Kicked him under the desk. <laughs> like, hey, uh, remember, we were under an invisibility cloak. We weren't there. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, and so now Lockhart's just, like, being a complete ass. Um, he's all cheery, and he's, like, basically saying that he thought Hagrid was guilty all along, even though he totally went to visit Hagrid and, like, you know, pretended to be friendly towards him. But, you know, Lockhart and pretending are kind of, like, you know, hand in hand. So, anyway... Um, so yeah, that's really, it's driving Harry a little crazy the way Lockhart's acting and he writes down on a little note for Ron, let's do it tonight. And so Ron's like, son of a bitch, follow the spiders, huh? And then he looks over and sees Hermione's empty desk and there he's like, fucking fine, fine. So, that evening they are in the common room and it's all uh crowded because you know nobody can go anywhere after six o'clock for the curfew um and so they're having to wait it out harry got, gets the invisibility cloak and just hangs on to it basically and they play exploding snap with uh, R R fred and george and like just kind of you know try to like hurry it along and and uh wait for everybody to go to bed and it's still as the it's phrased well after midnight um before everybody goes to bed and then they are able to get under the cloak um the most useful plot device in this entire fucking series um i mean you can't beat an invisibility cloak to get where you shouldn't be able to get uh, <laughs> Plus, I mean, there is just an exciting factor to the idea of being able to do such a thing. Um, 
Anyway, so yeah, they have to like, you know, again, like deal with like getting through. Just like they did the same on the, except without Ron stumping his toe in front of Snape, but basically the same shit. They have to like get around all the teachers and ghosts without being heard or smelt or seen or or well, not seen, but you know, those things. Um or run into, that's the other thing. Um by anybody and then sneak out the doors and then head down to the forest and of course on the way out after they get on the, into the grounds Ron's like of course you know they might you know, uh, they might not have been going to the forest they could have been you know been going a- anywhere they you know we might not even see any spiders it could be you know but but I know that's the way it looked like they were going but <laughs> that's Ron right there he's you know he's he's getting it together <laughs> Um, so they get to Hagrid's house, and of course, uh, Fang goes nuts when they, uh, open the, uh, the door, so they feed him some treacle fudge, um, to glue his teeth together for a bit, and they're like, all right, we're, we're, we're going into the forest, Fang, and Fang's like, okay, cool, let me just get, a a, a nice little pisser out the way, all right, and let's do this thing. And so, uh, of course, Harry lights his wand, and Ron's like, "Yeah, you know, broken wand. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to light mine." Um, and so, uh, Ron, you know, uh, I mean, sorry, not Ron. Harry uses his lit wand to scan the ground, and of course, he sees a couple of spiders headed in to the forest. So, at this point. As I said earlier at the beginning of this episode, um, um, this is where Ron really has to <laughs> lay it all on the line. Because, like, you know, he's going into a place that's already, like, forbidden and scary. Um, and he's never been in there before. And there's no, like, adults or powerful wizards on their side going with him. It's him and his best friend. And they're both, you know... Eh, you know, you could say Harry's a bit more skilled, but they're relatively equally matched. Um, but that is with each other, not with uh, uh, most of what they might encounter. But they're doing it anyway. So it's 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 bravery and courage for both of them. Don't get me wrong. It's just that it's. I just feel like it's like uh, it's like if 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 if, the, if if it was follow the snakes, which it wouldn't be because that would be a lot stranger. But if it was, and I was a character, it would be that would be the equivalent for me. Instead of following the spiders like Ron is, it would be like, follow the snakes. I'd be like, no, please don't make me. Just just have it a cadaver me right now, please. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> morbid humor. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here for all of this. Um, so, yeah, Ron's like, fine. Broken wand. Spiders, forest, let's go. Cowardly dog, let's get it. Um, giant cowardly dog, but nonetheless. So anyway, so they head off into the forest. Um, dun, 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 dun. So they get 20 minutes in. Um, ba, 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 ba. Where is it? Right. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, they yeah. That's what I was thinking. So they get about twenty minutes in, and then they see um, that the spiders have decided to veer off the path. They've to this point they've been on the path, um, and so Harry's like having that like sort of conflicted moment of like, well, Hagrid said never leave the path, but Hagrid also said, you know, follow the spiders, and Hagrid's in Azkaban, so. We're gonna we're gonna do this, and Ron's like, yeah. I mean, we came this far. Like, Ron's committed. He's like, I may just die today. Whatever. <laughs> Maybe from fear, but still. So now they're having to kind of trudge through it because everything's thicker because there's not a path, and and they keep having to stop to check to make sure they're still on the trail of the uh, spiders. And there's like another half hours worth of walking, so they're almost an hour into the uh, uh, into the forest now. That's incredibly deep into the forest. Um, 
and the ground sloping downward, and then out of nowhere, Fang barks, and they're like, ah, nah. and um, so then, yeah, Harry's like, wait a minute, there's something over there, something big, <laughs> and so they're just like spending time, like kind of freaking out, pre-panicking, Ron's all, oh no, oh no, oh no, um, Harry's like, they're gonna hear you, and he, he's like, hear me? It's already heard Fang, which, you know, is a very good point, because Fang barked really fucking loudly. Um, so they're looking, and they're trying to decide what's gonna happen, and then all of a sudden, um, Wow. I guess that's a plane flying overhead that's uh, incredibly loud, considering that I'm indoors with uh, no open windows or, or, or doors. Interesting. Um, <laughs> I think we'll just leave that in, because why not? Um, anyway, uh, 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 <laughs> out of nowhere... <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, there's a big blaze of light, and they're like, wait, what the f light, huh? And they have to, like, throw up their hands. It's so, because, I mean, it's pitch black in there, so they're, you know, their eyes are well adjusted by that point in time, and then all of a sudden they're blinded. Um, they're like, oh, really, Brandon, is that how, um, is that how light works? With, with, was that how eyes work and, and pupils and things like that? Yes, yes, it is, just in case you were wondering. Um, but then Ron's like, no, it's, holy shit, it's, it's the car. Harry's like, what? And Ron's like, yeah, no, no fucking shit, I know, it's the car, come look. And sure enough, the, the, the same car that they crashed into the Whomping Willow, the Ford Anglia, um, it, uh, it's, it's gone running wild in the forest, um, how on earth there are paths wide enough for a vehicle in the forest? Your guess is as good as mine. One might say that maybe it made its own path by knocking over, like, smaller trees or something in areas. I, I don't know. That seems a lot for a vehicle to endure. But anything's possible. Whatever. It, it's, it's a, you know, it's an incredibly useful tool. Um, to say the least. Uh, so yeah, so they're like, holy shit, we thought it was going to attack us. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -mm -mm. So yeah, what Ron says is that the forest has turned it wild. Um, so it's like, you know, I mean, it was already magically enchanted, but now somehow it's kind of gotten like a bit of a brain of its own. I don't really know how the forest would do that, but maybe, who knows? Anything's possible. Uh, and so Harry's like trying to like, you know, relax and get his, get his, get his, uh, his, his vitals under control. Um, <laughs> Then he's like, okay, wait a minute, right, we were doing this thing, and he's like looking around, and he can't find any spiders. And then he looks up, and Ron's like standing there, and Ron's staring at a spot like 10 feet above Harry behind him. And there's like a, a, a look of, his face was livid with terror. That's a nice... It's a nice way of describing, you know, like a, a, a frozen scream, which I think she uses later too, but, you know. And then, of course, before Harry can even turn around, he's lifted off his feet and flipped upside down. Um, and then he hears Ron and, and, and Fang also get picked up, and so, yeah. <sighs> Things aren't looking so good for the... Uh, the Hogwarts boys. Um, <laughs> so now they're being like carried off. Um, 
So, and then they were in here, Harry's able to see that the thing that's carrying him is running along on six really long, hairy legs. So, obviously, we're getting a feel for what these creatures might be, you know, and also they were following the spiders. So, hello. Um, although it's kind of interesting, like, it's not like, 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 were those. <laughs> Where those little spiders were going, would it make sense them to, for them to go be where the giant spiders are? They're not obviously not the same species. It's not like spiders like just congregate together. But I don't I don't know. It, it's just one of those random things. I mean, obviously, it's used to kind of like create a bread breadcrumbs for them to follow into the forest. But anyway, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and of course, the other. You know, there's eight legs, but of course the the front two are the ones that are carrying Harry, and so it's running on the back six. six. Um, and so they're moving into now what they call the very heart of the forest. I mean, how one would know when it's that vast and deep, I don't know, but whatever. Uh... And I mean, and clearly, like, they're all in, like, just pure states of shock right now. It even says, like, he never knew long, how long he was in the creature's clutches. Because, I mean, yeah, it, and that's another reason why I say who knows how deep they go into the forest. They could be, they, they, they could travel for five minutes, or it might be, like, another half an hour on, you know, by spider. Who the hell knows? Like, when you're that freaked out, like, time starts to play really interesting tricks on your mind. So, anyway, um... And then, but they get to a point, I guess, that is, that's obviously a clearing, and he says that the, the, the darkness lifts enough for him to see uh, the ground, and then uh, a vast hollow with a, a big domed web, and da, 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 da. And then he sees, like, you know, he's only been able to see the bottom of the, the spider that's carrying him, but now he's uh, able to look around and he can see these massive... Uh, uh, says that there's spiders um, the size of cart horses, which, you know, it's hard to compare something that's got the kind of body and legs that a spider does, but regardless of how what, what, what method of size comparison you use, uh, when you compare it to a cart horse, it's huge one way or the other. Um, uh, and it's, uh, it's interesting. These, I mean, I think, you know, rolling does like a, 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 a sort of like a, a mashup of, of, I mean, which I think a lot of fantasy probably does, but you know, a mashup of its own mythical characters. And so uh, our species and, and, and magical creatures and whatever, um, like in uh, in Tolkien's universe, uh, there's like the the spiders that that in in the Hobbit that they, you know capture the uh, uh, the the dwarves and uh, and Bilbo helps save them and everything with his ring. Um, but he use the ring, yeah, I think he does. Anyway, um, and then there's uh, then there's Shelob near the end of, of Lord of the Rings, um, that's a massive spider, probably in this range here, but that, um, doesn't, the Shelob doesn't talk though. Um, and that's what, well, we're going to see here is a difference, but that's just the thing. Like I said, like Rowling likes to kind of mash up features and characteristics between different creatures and sort of make her, you know, and I, I think that's kind of nice. I mean, it's like her version of it and that instead of it just being like, oh, like that's just like the spider in this story. It's like, no, it's a giant spider, but it's like a different type of character. Um, so anyway, uh, bah, 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 bah. and so they put them down and then so they're like, they're, you know, Sir Harry surveying the scene. Obviously, he sees these these giant spiders everywhere, and they're like all circled around him. And he's just, you know, him and Ron are both just freaking the fuck out. Um, and it says that Ron looks like Harry felt like he's just got the uh, the silent scream on his face, um, and his eyes are popping. I mean, can you even? I I can't imagine. I mean, even I don't love spiders, so I mean, it would be terrifying for me too. But 
But for Ron, having that be his biggest fear is spiders. And now there's like spiders like a size of a size that one couldn't even imagine in their wildest nightmares. Um, and there's a bunch of them. Um, um, anyway, and so Harry's taking all this in and then he realizes that uh, the spider that just uh, dropped him is actually talking, but he didn't recognize it at first because they click their uh, their little pincers uh, when they speak because, you know, of course they do. Um, and so it's calling Aragog. Um, and so eventually, uh, from the middle of the web, a spider now the size of a small elephant emerged. Now, that is a size comparison that's really amazing. Um, <laughs> especially because it says small elephant. It does not say baby elephant. I mean, baby elephants are big but not huge. A small adult elephant, even a small adult uh, uh, Asian elephant, is fucking enormous. And so, <laughs> But Aragog, as we will sort of piece together, is uh, 50 years old. so Or maybe 51, even thereabouts uh so uh he comes out and and he's aragog is just like he's huge he's got gray like coming out of his uh, uh his hair and stuff and his eyes are all milky and white and blind and i mean he's just he's nearing the end and they're like, it's men. And he's like, is it Hagrid? And they're like, no. And he's like, kill him. I was sleeping. <laughs> and Harry's like, no, but, but wait, well, we're, we're friends of Hagrid. Friends of Hagrid. And so thus commences a little dialogue between uh, uh, Harry and, and Aragog, which in in having uh, said dialogue, we get as the readers to learn about what happened 50 years ago, 50 years ago. Um, and basically what happened was, well, what we saw in, in Riddle's memory wasn't inaccurate. It was just incomplete. Um, so, uh, you know, Harry starts to describe this current situation and Aragog's like, no, 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 no. That was years and years and long years, 50 years ago. He doesn't say 50 years ago. He doesn't count. Um, I'm not saying he can't. He just he doesn't choose to. Um, and so yeah, he he explains that 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 people thought that he was the monster and that he came from the Chamber of Secrets. And so Harry like like just so just to confirm, you a uh are not the monster that was causing the attacks before, and b not from the Chamber of Secrets, right? And he's like, no, I mean, yes, you're right. Um, and so Harry's like, well, what is? And he's like, we can't, we don't speak of it. It is the thing spiders fear the most. Um, which so is another point that sort of, uh, and, and Harry says it later in the chapter or thinks it later that, 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 that like, this is like sort of like a, a monster Voldemort. Like it's, it's a, a monster that even the monsters won't name, which, you know, is a theme that like, you know, persists, uh, uh throughout the whole thing with, with Voldemort's name, how, you know, characters like Dumbledore and Harry, uh, and, and Lupin and Sirius, uh, will say Dumbledore, I mean, we'll say, we'll say, uh, Voldemort's name, uh, whereas most everybody else, you know, is, allows it to become a, a thing of fear. Um, and well, somebody, somebody somewhere was making like the point that maybe that's part of why Harry and, and Dumbledore are able to survive him at all, because they're like, they see him not as just some great, terrible force to be feared, but uh, uh, as a person who's a flawed, you know, messed up, scary, but but also a person. Um, I don't know if that's exactly. Uh, I'm not sure if I completely subscribe to that theory, but but it's interesting. Um, I mean, I do think that there's a very important point to be made about like the fear of a name increasing the fear itself, which is what Dumbledore says, and I, that's totally true. Um, 
but uh but yeah um i say totally true i mean it's totally how it works in these books i i i suppose it probably works in real life too i'm sure it's probably based on something that i don't know about or I'm not thinking of right now uh anyway whatever um so right so harry you know, like checks off the things on this list like not from the chamber of secrets not you and, and so yeah aragog sort of like quickly explains how hagrid got uh aragog as an egg but he came from a distant land and he describes how he was raised in a cupboard in this castle which of course we kind of got to see that in the memory um, and he says, Hagrid is my good friend and a good man. Um, you know, and, and Hagrid, like, helped him escape and has protected him. And, you know, he's lived in the forest ever since. Um, yet, <laughs> he is not willing to extend that, um, that, that level of, of, of respect and, and protection to our, our you know, our, our, our heroes here. <laughs> who, you know, ventured into the forest following spiders, not knowing what they were going to get into, and now are kind of fucked on the surface, right? You know, like, 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 on their own abilities and merits, they're not about to get out of the situation. Like, 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 we're pretty certain of that. We don't have to, to, to think too much about it. Like, it's, it's a, it's a dire scenario. Um, and and uh and so to lead into that uh uh Aragog you know says like no I never attacked anybody but it would have been my instinct he says he just said that you know out of respect for Hagrid I never did and that's when I yeah, yeah no he's like he's like we don't speak of it we don't name it right 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 um so of course just you know giving it like the old like try just to see. Um, Harry's like, well, we'll just, uh, we'll just be off then, uh, have a lovely evening. And he's like, be off. I think not, mate. You're going to get eaten. And they're like, but, uh, but, and he's like, yeah, I don't, I, we don't harm, we don't harm Hagrid, but, but, but. When you just wander in here all tasty, like, morsely, like, like this, can't deny him some food, even though there's animals all over the forest, right? But whatever. Uh, so, yeah. Um, just as the spiders are starting to close in at the last moment, of course, the uh, the car shows up, because of course it does. <laughs> Um, and it like blasts a big note on, on the horn and the lights shine down into there and they, it rides down into the hollow and knocks spiders askew everywhere and they grab Fang and they hop in and they thunder off, um, knocking spiders askew and stuff like that. Um, did I say askew already just now? Oh, well. <clears throat> hmm. All right. And so, yeah, so they haul ass and, uh, so they're all there and they're like, you know, Ron's having like instant, like, like, like just crazy shock. He's still like sitting there with the silent scream on his face and, unresponsive to, uh, to talking. So the car does its thing, gets them away from the danger. And it's interesting, like, the, the, uh, the spiders don't pursue beyond a certain point. I guess they realize that, like, there's no point in doing so after it knocked so many of them askew. It must have scared them. Um, might have even killed a couple, so... Who knows? Maybe they're cannibals. Maybe they're satisfied. Who knows? Anyway, um, so they 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 make their way for a ways, and um, well, Ryan's eyes weren't popping anymore, but he did still have the silent scream, as I say. Um, Fang is still howling in the back seat. Fang is also like traumatized, like big time. Ron and Fang were both like uber traumatized. <laughs> 
Because I kind of see like like uh, uh, Fang is sort of like uh, I don't know. This just popped into my head. I don't know if I actually agree with this or not. <laughs> but I just was like, is Fang like like uh, Samuel Tarley of dogs? You know, like kind of a coward, like like. Big but not really brave. I don't. I don't know. That's probably not the right comparison. I just anyway, whatever. Um, so blah 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 blah. About ten minutes later, the trees start to thin, and then they start seeing the sky again. And then the car stops at the edge of the forest, and Fang is like flinging himself against the door like a a, a wrongfully uh, imprisoned person in the back seat of a cop car. And Harry lets him out, and he runs off home with his tail between his legs, literally, because he's a dog, and that's what they do um, when they're scared, I mean, or, you know, angry or something. I'm usually scared, though. Um, and so Ron eventually is able to get out, too, and so Harry gives the car a pat, and it, it takes off back into the forest. Wild car. Wild car. We don't ever see it again, though, do we? And we go back into the forest a few times. We should see that car again. Or maybe maybe Ron tells Mr. Weasley and he comes and gets it. Who knows? Anything's possible. Um, <laughs> so anyway, with that rescue, like, like again, it's like even though the car is just an well, it's not inanimate, Inanimate. It's just, I don't know, it's like a semi intelligent uh, uh, magic thing. I don't really know what it is, but but it helps them out. Even though, like, they ran it into a tree, it still chooses to save their lives here. Um, which, I mean, you know, I don't know, like, in, in, in sort of a, a way you could make the argument that that's sort of saying, like, symbolically that, like, with the characters in the story, like, again, sort of what I was talking about before, that, like, they, despite their flaws or even the times that they hurt each other, they still love each other and they, uh, and they still support each other and all that good stuff. So, the car displayed this, <laughs> this, uh, characteristic or property or whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway, uh, so Harry goes in to get the, uh, the cloak, um, from Hagrid's cabin and Fang is under a blanket. I don't know how he managed that. I guess you can kind of snuggle your way under a blanket if you're a dog. Um, and he comes back out and Ron's like throwing up in the pumpkin patch and he's just like, follow the fucking spiders. And he's like, I'll never forgive Hagrid, which of course he will. But he also says we're lucky to be alive and that... Could not be more true. Um, and of course, Harry's like, well, I'm sure Hagrid didn't think that Aragog would harm any of his friends. And Ron's like, well, see, now you've put your 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 your, uh, your point, the, the nail head thing. You're saying it now, buddy. That's the problem. Um, you know, he's like, he always thinks monsters aren't as bad as they're made out. And look where it got him. He's an Azkaban. Which, of course, he's there unjustly. But, you know, there is still kind of a point to what Ron's saying. I mean, hell, they, the, well, Ron wasn't there. But Harry and Hermione, like, had to get fucking detention and could have gotten worse uh, just for trying to sneak away uh, Hagrid's pet dragon. Um... I mean, granted, I'm sure Dumbledore knew what was going on anyway, and they just had to play along, but whatever. Um, it was still a goddamn pet dragon, regardless, in a wooden house. Um, and Ron's like, what the fuck did he send us in there for in the first place? Like, what did we... And, of course, Harry, Harry's like, well, I, I did have a conversation. I don't know if you were listening or not, but, but what we learned, uh, in case you were wondering is that Hagrid never opened the Chamber of Secrets. Um, he was innocent. And Ron's like, innocent, my ass. We just about died. Um, 
So, blah, 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 blah. And they go back in under the cloak and they do the thing and the stuff and back up through the castle, back into the common room. Which, by the way, so, like, the the fat lady, and I don't know if this is like this in, 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 in well, there aren't any other, I don't think any of the other ones are guarded by portraits. Um, they all seem to be a little different. But uh, anyway, my point was about to be that, like, the fat lady, I guess maybe because it's, it's a unique situation, she never, like, she might tell them off, but she never turns them in, even when they come in. Like, I mean, you have to think, this this has got to be like 3.30 in the morning or something by this point. After all that time into the forest, then the conversation. I mean, it's got to be like somewhere between 3 and 4 a.m. Um, and there's not even a mention of it. They just get back into the uh, into the common room. Which, I mean, you know, I understand like she's not going to have every interaction with the, the, the fat lady anytime they come in and out of the common room. That would get to be a bit much. However... This is a fairly uh, uh, unique situation. I mean, they do do some nighttime wondering, and sometimes they do get sort of like some f- flack from her or whatever, or at least questioning. But because uh, I and I thought of it because um, later on, Mrs. Weasley mentions that she got a telling off for coming in at four a.m. Um, and also, she says. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. We'll, we'll get to that later if we get there. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, so they get back to their dormitory, and Ron pretty much like just falls out. Like He's just completely done with life right now. So he passes out with his clothes on. Uh, Harry, on the other hand, because he was the one who had the conversation and, and has like been pouring over the facts ever since, is now still doing so, trying to think about everything he learned from Aragog. Because fucking A, if you're going to go risk your life talking to a, 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 a deadly giant spider and all of his deadly giant spider offspring, you may as well, if you get away from all that shit and you had a conversation, you might want to like you know, pour over every bit of that information just to make sure that you get everything you can out of it because you could have died. Um, <laughs> and so this is the part where he has that thought about, like, it sounds like the creature in the castle is like a monster Voldemort because even other monsters don't want to name it. But he's like, man, still don't have any idea who setting it setting the monster on people and who, what the, what kind of monster it is um and so he's you know he's kind of like starting to drift towards sleep and he's still thinking and then right before he's kind of done he's like getting drowsy and everything all of a sudden like one last thing that he learned clicks into his brain and he's like wait a minute and so he wakes Ron up after uh, hissing his name a few times in the dark. Um, and Ron's like, well, hmm, hmm, motherfucker, goddamn spiders. Um, and Ron's, I mean, Harry's like, uh, the the girl who died in the bathroom, the one that Aragog mentioned, which, by the way, how does Aragog know what a bathroom is? He's a spider. <laughs> But whatever, maybe he just heard the word. I mean, they know English anyway, whatever. Um, and, and so he's like, um, what if that girl never left that bathroom? What if she's still in that bathroom? And Ron's like, I don't know, you just woke me up, bro. Hang on. I don't know. Whoa, 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 you mean moaning Myrtle? Perhaps. And so that's where... The chapter ends. Um, we're getting real close now. That is, uh, let's see, what do we? Uh-huh. We got three more chapters after the conclusion of the one that we just concluded, um, and then we're off to Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, so yeah, let's see. Uh, as I said, this is a uh, 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 a big, you know. It's a crazy thing for for Ron to have to deal with the the, the bulk of this chapter. 
we also see that Harry is is finally right before this insanity, um, enjoying a little bit of uh, well, enjoying is kind of like not exactly right, but he's not receiving as much ridicule or or weird looks or mutterings because of of the attack on Hermione. But of course that comes at the cost of the attack on Hermione, which is, you know, providing a, a a less than lovely atmosphere for all of them. So anyway, yeah. Um, what else? We learned again, we learned that Hagrid wasn't the one who opened the chamber that 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 Aragog didn't come from the chamber that that whatever it is that Aragog um knows about that was in the chamber is something that the spiders fear and that they don't name um those who can name anyway that are you know given to speech such as these um uh, and then at the end we 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 sort of solve the mystery of who Mar- morning myrtle is most likely but that uh is is to come so um oh let's see dun, dun, dun. let's do our little um let me click on the previous chapter episode i mean um uh jorge got into some ex- explaining about uh prefects and had boys and girls and that they didn't necessarily in in real life have uh, a lot of power but were sort of like figureheads kind of um oh and he mentioned that uh homework diary at primary school and a planner at secondary school were sort of like that but like the diary but they but he said that he wouldn't have called them just a diary though um because that's that we were talking about somebody else mentioned the diary uh thing from the uh the diary chapter when it was first found um and how it had the year on it um because he said that the ones he got in school uh, jorge they had the uh the, the the school year on them and so that might be what it was who knows even though he said they wouldn't, he didn't think they would call it a diary. But but, eh, you know, there's there's room for a little bit of of uh, creative liberty there. Or you know, maybe it's based on a different thing, a, you know, slightly different, different schooling or whatever. I don't know. Um, I don't. I, I, there's still a lot for me to learn about the uh, the the school system in England because it's definitely different than than it is in the states. Um, anyway. Uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Um, as as it has been lately, I expect to be, you know, fairly consistent with this. We'll just see how it goes. But uh, anyway, until next time, have a uh, a lovely uh, whatever day segment you are in, and we'll we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Peace.